Hey guys, I hope you are all ready and excited to see this dining room DIY makeover on a budget. I have been keeping this project kind of secret from you guys for a couple of months when I started putting all the files together, the first file, the first before shots the ones you're looking at right now, these were all filmed in early January. So almost two entire months have gone into this project waiting for things to arrive, waiting for things to be built, and just waiting for the right time to reveal the final makeover with you guys. So if you are excited for this video, give it a like, make sure you're subscribed for more. I do these DIY makeovers on the first Friday of every month on this channel, and I am so excited and already looking forward to the next video coming out. But enough about the future, we're focused on the dining room. First thing we're doing right now, my husband Christian is gonna be helping me take apart this little end table, sofa table, entryway table. I never really knew what to call this. We actually sold this piece of furniture on OfferUp though. So we were disassembling it for them to make it easy for them to take out of the house. You also may have noticed four dining chairs suddenly showed up. These chairs actually came in a long time ago and we've just been holding on to them, waiting for the time to tackle this room. They are from Walmart. I will have them linked below. They're a little bit pricey, but honestly, they're the cheapest I found this style of chair and I love them to pieces. So that's gonna be in this space and we also now have a new rug. So basically all I'm doing now is clearing out the room. We sold the old piece of furniture that was in there. We got rid of all of the bar cart items. And now I'm basically getting this room ready to start from scratch. We're starting with a completely clean slate in this room and I cannot wait to show you guys how we transform it. This is an 8x10 bleached jute rug from Amazon. Anything that I can link for you guys that's featured in this room, I will have linked down below. But if I forget something or you spot something else that's not a part of this video, just ask me for it in the comments. I'll hunt it down for you guys because I love helping you guys shop and find all of the great home deals that I love to do. Now this rug was a little bit pricier. This video is called a DIY makeover on a budget, but there are certain things that I'm not really willing to sacrifice like taking the cheap route on, and I think one of those is rugs. I knew I wanted a light braided rug to break up the texture and the darkness and how orange the floor was, so getting this rug was super important to brighten up this room, so I was more than willing to spend a little bit more on this piece. You may be wondering where our dining table is since it's not in the video yet, so I'm gonna hop into the garage and show you guys the progress that Christian was making on actually building our dining table from scratch. So Christian actually is building this from scratch. He went to a lumber store in our area. He bought a bunch of maple. That's what color this wood is. It's light maple. And then we're actually going to just do a clear coat on the top of it basically to seal it. We don't want to stain it or change the color of it because I love this whitewash color. I basically showed him a restoration hardware dining table that I loved that was like two or $3,000 and out of our price range. And since he's into woodworking right now, he's like, oh, I can totally do this. So I think we pay maybe like four to $500 just in lumber for this and then a hundred to two hundred and other things that go into making the table assemble and everything and all the glue and whatnot but basically he has to trim down the sides of all of these planks so they are the same size and when they're glued together they're smooth and flat and then he adds on a second layer of boards along the edges to make it look thicker from the sides if he didn't glue these on it would just be that thin and that's kind of a thin dining table so the edges are a little bit thicker without adding tons of bulk to the table because 
because this is a heavy table. And now over here, he's got all of the parts to build the two legs. You'll see how the whole table looks when we're all finished, but we're gonna build the legs. He's gonna finish cutting off all of the edges to make sure they're all seamless. Then we sand everything down, and then we put on a top coat. We actually do four layers of the sealant. So we do a gloss or a high gloss top coat for three of those coats. So it's nice and clear and clean. And then the fourth coat, we actually switch it up and put a flat top coat to make it look matte and kind of more natural wood looking. I love the finish of it. I am so excited to have this in our dining room and I think it'll just like add to the neutral wood on wood tones that we have going in there. Guys, I have an apology to owe to all of you. I was a bad YouTuber and actually deleted the rest of the footage of the table being built. We assembled it in this dining room and then I showed you guys us finally applying the top coat. Basically, we use the brand General Finishes and like I said, we do four coats of it total and we did it inside of this room. We laid down a drop cloth to protect the carpet and the floors and we just went for it on there. That way it would dry inside, away from dust and dirt and it turned out beautiful. I love this table so much and I will actually find and link the video down below that Christian roughly followed for building this. We only have four chairs in this video, but ultimately we wanna buy two more so we can have three chairs on each side. We really like the look of three chairs on each side and then no end chair. Now getting to the fun part of these videos, the serious DIYs, the ones that you can really recreate yourself with very little tools. If you saw my bedroom makeover, you already know what's happening here. We're gonna be doing some faux molding on these walls. So it's basically the same DIY from that last video, but I'm adding in some angles, so I'm basically just making it 10 times harder. I didn't share this though in the first video, the process of me mapping out and trying to visualize how much molding I needed and all of like the math and measurements that go into it. So if you had a couple questions left from that first video, here's a little bit more in-depth look of how I do this. So first, I'll just roughly tape out what shapes I want and then you can see it's the next day and I look honestly pretty rough in this video. Wow, Allison. Maybe I should have uh, put myself together a little bit more in this day, but besides the point, I'll do a rough outline, not too worried about the size or like being exact or anything and then I'll go in later and get really exact and I found to make these angles run parallel to the angle of the staircase above it the easiest way was to just push pin some string in between it really tightly and then I could see the exact angle that would keep it the same height if that makes sense the biggest struggle with doing the faux molding is making it look professional and clean because if you're attaching these to the wall and they're not properly angled, they're not parallel, they're not leveled out, it can look really sloppy. So it's really important to take the time to figure out all of these little details. And here you can see me struggling to figure out what degree of the angle this was because I needed to know that to know what size to cut down all of our trim that we were buying. Now this is a whole lot easier of a process if you're just doing squares and rectangles. It's just 45 degree cuts on every single corner. Super easy, super simple, but here I was getting pretty tricky with the math. Ultimately, all of the math I did was for nothing because it was just kind of a trial and error when it came down to it and just putting things on the wall and seeing if it fits. And if it didn't, I would take it back to the saw and cut it down a little bit more. But when I'm putting this up, I'm using double-sided mounting tape. So this is a renter-friendly DIY. You can do this and it just pulls straight off your wall. You have to be careful to not pull off any paint with it, but it is pretty renter-friendly. Now I'm gonna just attach all of the molding after the headaches upon headaches of doing the math for all of this, but it's ultimately worth it in the end. I really love this DIY to transform an entire wall. It's a syndicate at night Blessing play bed in the daytime Goosebumps rise at night And settle back down at sunrise Guide the cord at noon And say you'll be back soon Tut tut no
Now, paying close attention to the details and getting everything perfectly level is step one of making this project look almost professional. And step two to this project is this magic wood filler. This is Elmer's white paintable wood filler and it basically can just fill in any gaps you have where your cuts were not absolutely perfect. And with these angles, I had lots of gaps to fill in. This will definitely be linked down below because it is the MVP of this DIY. It turns some rough looking molding into professional and seamless and I really love this. I will say it would look really awesome if you could caulk these to the wall and fill in any of the gaps that happen between the trim and the wall, but because I'm trying to be renter friendly, I'm going to skip this step. This can of paint has seen better days. It was delivered to us with a bunch of tape covering the lid of it, and it's from our property manager. This is the same color that is painted on every door, trim, wall, everywhere in this house, and I don't know the name of it, sadly. On my last video, a lot of you wanted to know what color our walls were, and I, I don't know. I've asked them for the name of the paint before, and they just tell me that they can deliver this can of touch-up paint for us, which is what I'm using now to paint the trim the same color of the wall to make it truly seamless, but I really don't know the name of it, so I'm sorry for all of you guys who really love this color of wall. Next up are some DIY floating shelves. So we picked up some lumber from our local Home Depot. And a little tip, if you guys don't have any saws or power tools at home, you don't need them to do this DIY. You can just ask them at the store to cut the wood to the correct lengths that you want. Once you go back to the lumber section, if you walk all the way to the back of the store, there's normally a nice guy waiting by a bunch of giant tools who is more than happy to cut the pieces of lumber for you for free. So don't feel like you need to have a bunch of tools to make any of these DIYs happen. A lot of these lumber stores and hardware stores are willing to help you out. But because we have the tools at home, Christian cut these down to length for us, and I wanted to do two floating shelves above the table that were the same seven foot length of our table. So Christian cut those down, and now you can see I'm using an orbital sander to sand them down to make them smooth, because next thing on the to-do list is to paint them black. Yes, a little bit scary, a little bit daunting, but just trust me, it really is gonna tie this whole room together and the high contrast of the black on the light colored walls is gonna turn out. Just stick with me. A little off topic, but I wanted to ask you guys while you're watching this video, what room you're looking forward to seeing next. I have a couple ideas of what to do for next month's video, but I really can't decide. I'm just so excited about all of these rooms that I need your help. So let me know down below in the comments which room you're looking forward to seeing the most. My top three options right now are the powder bath downstairs, like a complete transformation renter friendly in there, a DIY makeover on our living room, it won't be a complete transformation, but we can still do a lot of good work in there. Or the original plan was to do the guest bedroom. That would be a lot of work, but also super satisfying. So let me know down below which space you want to see made over next. Here's a fun DIY hack you may not know about. So if you're gonna be painting multiple coats of paint of the same color, you don't have to wash your paintbrush in between every coat while it dries. If you put the brush in a plastic bag and then place it in the fridge, the paintbrush will stay wet and the paint won't harden and dry while it's in there. So you'll be ready to go without washing that paintbrush for the second coat. The wood surprisingly soaked up a lot of this black paint, so to make it super, super dark, I'm gonna be painting a second coat on this right here, and then following it up with a matte clear enamel 
basically a top coat in a spray paint form. And guys, do as I say, not as I do. Do not use spray paint inside your home. Overspray will get everywhere. It is not good. It is best to do it in an outdoor ventilated space where it doesn't matter what surface you're spray painting it on. Please don't do what I just did right there. But I still wanted to let you know that I did seal these wood shelves. Once all sides of the shelves were painted, I did not do a great job filming how we did this next part. Now the way that we were attaching them to the walls was a little bit different. We have these brackets that will actually slide into the wood so it appears to be floating. So to make these brackets work, we bought a very large drill bit and basically you have to very carefully drill deep into these shelves. And uh, you'll see in a little bit, we actually went through the wood in a couple of spots. And guys, these were just such a struggle and a pain to put up. I love that they're floating shelves and they're super sturdy and strong because all of these brackets are screwed into studs, but it was a like three day process to make this work and it was just overall not worth it. Would not recommend, but I do have another little DIY hack. So our stud finder was not working well on this wall, but on YouTube, I found a guy who pointed out that all studs or at least most studs will have some nails or screws in them holding up the pieces of drywall and those screws are magnetic. So if you have a strong magnet, you can stick it to different points in your walls and you'll find where the screws are. That's where you're gonna have studs. So I would mark all of those spots with little pieces of tape. And then we lined up the brackets on the wall into those studs to make sure that these were super, super strong. Now, once the brackets were up, getting the shelves onto the brackets was a whole ordeal. Like, I don't even have words for how frustrated I was, how many times it got stuck on the wall. Guys, I was just riding the struggle bus so hard. Christian had to come in and save the day. And to make it even work, he had to take out a couple of these brackets. So our top shelf only has three of the brackets and the bottom shelf is only held up by two brackets. Thankfully, we're not putting anything too heavy on them, but it's okay, but it is a struggle to get this done right. So I will link these brackets for you guys if you're up to the challenge, but just know they're a hassle. Ultimately, they look great, but it was kind of a long time coming to actually figure them out. Christian was actually the hero who got these shelves on the wall to stay, and then he went ahead and filled them in with a wood filler and sanded them down so I can paint them later on. The next DIY was 100% not necessary, but something I really, really wanted. Christian's gonna be putting together a DIY plant stand for us. I picked up a plant from Lowe's a couple weeks ago, and then I grabbed a pot from Ikea that was like cement and gray and looked super cool. But my only problem is that I wanted it to be kind of tall. One of the corners kind of needed like a tree almost to go in there, and I needed to add some height. So a plant stand was the perfect solution. Once again, I will link the article down in the description bar that Christian followed to fully assemble this for us. Just like the floating shelves though, you don't need all of these power tools to make this DIY happen. I kind of regret even using any of the power tools because I wish I could have shown you how easy it was. In a future video, we'll probably make another one and show you how simple it can be because wood glue is honestly everything you need for this DIY. If you go to Home Depot, buy the lumber there, have them cut all the pieces to size for you, and then bring it home with some wood glue. That's all you really need for this DIY. You need to glue these pieces together to create an X. That's gonna be the base that your plant is sitting on. And then on each side of the X, you're gonna glue on your plant stand legs. So we added a couple other features to make it super sturdy because our plant was pretty large, but you definitely do not need power tools to make this happen. I will be linking that article, like I said, down below, but normally those articles are just kind of suggestions to us and there's not like a true science to all of this. You can change it and make it any dimensions that fit your needs. I can't get it out of my mind You know I think about it all the time The way you move, baby, you're so fine Your hips swing like God's design I can't get it out of my mind You know I think about it all the time You can 
touch my eye. It's so sacred, so divine. Another quick DIY to make your room look pulled together is to hem your curtains. Get them off the floor, people. All you need is an iron, some stitch witchery, I'll have that link down below, and a couple of sewing pins. Now I'm gonna pull my curtains flat across, press against the ground, and then with four pins, just go across the entire length of the curtain, marking where it hits the ground. Then I'm gonna pull my ironing board out, and once again, sorry about the bad camera angles here, I didn't show it very well but you'll fold up the bottom part of the curtains to the point where the pin is placed. You'll cut a piece of that stitch witchery and then you'll be ironing it on. Super simple, super cheap, a great DIY to solve your curtains dragging on the floor. The way you move, baby, you're so fine. Your hips swing like God's design. Hanging the shelves left quite the mess. There's a lot of sawdust all over the carpet, so a quick cleanup is definitely necessary. I'm also gonna be moving the chairs back around and then doing the touch-up paint on the shelves, and then we're getting to the fun part, decorating. You guys have to know I can't do a room makeover without featuring some of my prints. If you do not know, I have my own Etsy shop where I sell digital downloadable prints. All of these prints you can find on my shop except for our wedding photos, those are not mine to sell. But a couple of them are new, a couple of them are old. And I would love to have you all visit my shop, a place called Homeco, it'll be linked down below in the description bar. And just for you guys watching in this video, I have a 20% off coupon code for you guys. If you use code YouTube when you check out throughout the next week, so Friday, March 5th through Friday, March 12th, it'll work. Anything in my shop will be 20% off as a thank you. But getting back to the video and getting back to the decorating, I'm switching out all of these frames for the new prints that I picked up from Walmart recently. And in this video, I really didn't wanna buy any other decor pieces. So I went around my home, I shopped my house, I have other little spaces that I hold on to decor and keep it in storage just for moments like these. And all of these frames I just had on hand. With most of my decor pieces in storage pulled out and in one place, I started just placing things where I thought they might work well on the shelves. A couple of decorating tips for you guys is to start with your tallest items on the left and then go descending in height towards the right. People in America at least read left to right and so their eye naturally travels that direction when looking at something, so it's more visually appealing when things trend downward from left to right. Another trick is to decorate in threes or multiples. So you can see on the second shelf, I have two frames and a little basket. That's three items paired together. But to contradict that a little bit, you don't want everything on your shelf, especially a longer shelf like this, to be paired in threes. So have a couple things stacking. Like I have two stacking white boxes. I also have this wooden tray rolling around by itself or just some simple stacks of mugs. You don't have to go crazy expensive with the decor. All of this was stuff from other places in my house or even my own kitchen cabinets. My original plan for these shelves was to place actually all of our serving dishes on it, so this would be a functional piece of decor. I've got trays and baking dishes and cake stands, but sadly it didn't pan out because the room is not wide enough for these shelves to be super wide. I think they ended up only being seven and a half inches wide, so we couldn't fit all of the big dishes in there, but we still did our best.
I also played with having a centerpiece in this table but just couldn't find something I loved. A lot of the pieces that I truly loved and thought would do a great job in the middle of the table were already on the shelves and I wasn't willing to give up how pretty those looked. But with that being done, are you guys ready to see the before and after shots of this room makeover? I still cannot believe that this is our dining room. I cannot wait to host people appropriately, of course, and I can't wait to have family here and just all the memories around the dining table. Having a dining room built out like this is so important to our family because fellowship is so important to us and spending meals with others is so high on our priority list. So I can't wait to have our family fly out here and enjoy a meal here. But if you guys want to be caught up on my channel, make sure you are subscribed. And if you're not following my Instagram, Instagram, I would highly recommend following me there. I was sharing sneak peeks of this dining room project the entire process. So the last two months, people who were following on Instagram got to see behind the scenes. So make sure you're following there, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Bye!